Good morning, kids. Welcome back to Kid City. This week, we are looking at Acts chapters 9 and 10. So, if you want to turn there, again, this week I'm going to summarize it because that is quite a lot of verses to read just to you. So, if you want to read them, go ahead, but I'm just going to jump right into the summary. So, Today we are going to be following one of the disciples called Simon Peter. Usually he's just called by his second name Peter, but some passages reference Simon Peter, some just Simon, some just Peter. We're going to call him Peter in this one. And so, if you remember, Peter has been a character in Acts since the very beginning of Acts, because he was one of Jesus' disciples. But... He, we haven't really talked about him in a while, because we were looking at other people. So now we're back to Peter. And up until this point, Peter and most of the other disciples have been ministering to and sharing the gospel with a group of people called the Jews. And they practice what's called Judaism, which is a religion that's similar to Christianity, which is what we believe, except that they don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah and he, they don't believe that he is the Savior. They just thought he's like a pretty cool teacher or something like that. And like I said, that's who the disciples were sharing the gospel with because the gospel is the fact that Jesus is the Messiah who is saved, sa who sacrificed himself to save us from death. Peter had been traveling to a few different places throughout the country where the Jew, where the majority of Jews lived. And he did lots of miraculous things through the power of the Holy Spirit and healed a bunch of people. And we can see a few examples of that in, in the first part of our passage, which is in Acts 9, verse 32 to 43. And so he heals a paralyzed man first so that he can walk. And then he brings a dead woman back to life. And again, this is all through the power of the Holy Spirit, not through his own power. And we've talked about that before. Another thing we've talked about is the promise of God from way back at the beginning of this book. That the disciples would be his witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, and to all the ends of the earth. And we'll see in the next part of our passage, which is Acts 10 verses 1 to 33, that Peter doesn't really want to go to the ends of the earth. He's, he's pretty comfortable just sharing the gospel with Jews, and he's fine there. And he doesn't really want to share the gospel with anyone else besides them. And this was because he was taught, Peter was taught, that anyone besides the Jews were unclean or common, as it says in this passage. And that doesn't mean they were, like, dirty, like they had been running around outside in the dirt all day. It just means that they were spiritually unclean and common. And being a Jew himself... Peter wanted to stay clean and not interact with those who were unclean or common. You know, because God, you know, is omniscient, which means he knows everything. He knows that how Peter felt about non-Jews, which we call Gentiles. So there are Jews and there are Gentiles. Gentiles are not Jews. For the gospel to be spread to the ends of the earth like God has promised someone would eventually have to share the gospel with Gentiles. And so the Lord tells Peter that that's what he wants him to do. And so to encourage him, he gives Peter this crazy vision. And in this vision, he tells him, God tells him that he is the one who decides what is clean or who is clean. And God tells Peter that when God has declared something or someone clean, they are clean for good. And nothing and no one can take away that standing from them. And the Lord tells Peter this in Acts 10.15. He says, 
that what God has made clean do not call common. And so Peter listens to the Lord. And of course, the timing was perfect because it's the Lord. And because just then, Peter was summoned to go to the house of a Gentile, a non-Jew, named Cornelius. And so because of what Peter had heard from the Lord, he was able to go without judgment and without fear of being unclean. And that's basically where our passage ends in Acts 10.33. But this isn't the last we'll see of Cornelius and Peter, and so we'll follow up next week with them to see what happens. And you might be wondering why this is such an important story, and even why is it in the Bible? Because first of all, it shows how even the disciples who follow Jesus can be prideful about so many things. For example, Peter was taking pride in the fact that he was clean and that the Gentiles were unclean or common. But that's not the only reason why this passage is important. This passage is also important because it gives a very simple explanation of something we call justification. And this is a big theological word, but it's actually really simple. Justification is what happened when Jesus took our sins and was a sacrifice for us. And because of this sacrifice, God has declared us righteous, even though we all have sinned and we should not be declared righteous. This is the act of justification. This is what we call justification. It's a standing in God's eyes. And so just like God told Peter that he had declared the Gentiles clean, God has declared us clean and us righteous. And that is such good news because nothing, n no person, no thing, nothing that we say or do or think or no sin that we commit will ever take away from the righteousness that God has declared over us, which is so cool. Let's pray and thank God that he has declared us righteous before him. God, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this opportunity to learn about justification and how you have declared us righteous even though we've sinned. And we thank you for that amazing blessing that you have given us. Continue to sanctify us, to make us more like you, and to draw us closer to you each day. In your name we pray. Amen. That's it. So this week, talk with your parents about what justification is, and tell them all of the smart things that you learned about it today. That's it. See you guys next week.